we're going to talk about a special kind of function called uh, a linear function or linear equations. And the idea here is we're going to have a thing that's a straight line when we look at the graph of it. But uh, where does this come from? And the basic idea is it's a function where the change in the outputs is proportional to the change in the inputs. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, talk about the equations used to describe these things. We'll talk about a particular quantity called the slope. Right? Uh, Get a, try to get a feel for what that means, but before we do anything, we're going to talk about some of this jargon. In particular, this idea of what's the change in output, what does change in input mean, and the first thing we're going to do is talk about what does it mean to, for two things to be proportional. Okay? So the idea about proportionality is this. Suppose I tell you that two quantities are proportional to one another. In this case, we'll say y is proportional to x. So what does that mean? It means there's some constant. For now, we'll just call it m, for lack of a better name. And what's special about these three things is that the first thing is related to the x. In, in this way, we say that y is equal to m times x. So the idea is if x doubles, y doubles, x triples, y is going to triple. But this m, what does it mean? If m is a large positive number and x changes a little bit, we're going to see a big change in the y value. If m is a number close to zero with positive, say like 0.1, then if I see a small change in x, I'm going to see an even smaller change in the y. Okay? All right, so based on this, we now have to talk about, going back to the original definition, the change in y is proportional to change in x for a linear equation. So what does that mean? Okay, so suppose we have two points. And we're talk about the change in the x's and the changes in the y's. So. In terms of the x's, the change in the x is this distance from here to here is just x2 minus x1. In terms of the change in y's, it's going to be that distance here. This goes from y2 to y1, and that's just y2 minus y1. Okay. So what do we have? We have Change in the y's or the change in the outputs are y2 minus y1. Change in the inputs are x2 minus x1. Now if I say that this change is proportional to that change, that means that if I'm looking at the linear equation, this thing is equal to this thing, but there's some constant m where this thing is true. Okay? So this thing right here is a linear equation. And the idea is, if suppose I know what an x1 and y1 is, this is going to tell me for any x2 what the corresponding y2 is going to be. Okay? So let's see. Um, let me look at this a different way. And I'm going to change this. And I'm going to say now, I'm not going to give that a particular number. I'm just going to say that's any number in the relationship. So suppose I have this x1 y1, sorry, that should be an x1, then for any number in this relationship, 
whose distance is x, y, we have that y minus y1 is m times x minus x1. Another way to look at this is that m, this constant of proportionality, is the change in the y over the change in x. So graphically we have change in y divided by the change in x is always going to be the same, no matter where I am on this. And what happens is if we graph this, we're going to get a straight line. Okay? And this proportion of the rise over the run, you'll hear us say that, is called the slope. So the slope tells us basically how steep this is. Right? If I get a large change in y for a small change in x, I'm going to have a large positive slope. If I have a very small change in y for a, a, a large change in x, I'm going to have a very shallow slope. It's going to be positive but close to zero. If it goes the opposite way, if this is a negative change for the negative x, I'm going to have a negative slope. Okay. So what does that mean? So if I have a two such slopes here, suppose I have that is call that M1 zero, y zero. Okay. We know that on this point, on the, this line, we're going to have x zero, y zero somewhere. Suppose I have another relationship like this. I know that x one, y one is on that. Like so. Now this is going to be a different slope, call that m two. In this case, I have a larger change in y for a given change in x. This is going to be, both of these are positive. This is going to be a larger positive number. Okay. Likewise, if I have negative slopes, in this case, The negative slope is going to go downwards, so if I have a change in x, the change in y is going to be negative. Like so. And if I have a steeper negative line, suppose this has the point x1, y1. going to have that relationship, this is going to be a number that's more negative than that. Okay? So this is going to be steeper, it's going to be more negative, it's going to be larger in absolute value, but to the left of this on the number line, so if I just think of this in terms of the number line, my M1 is going to be there, my M2 is going to be further away from zero. Is that all right? Okay, so um, let's look at an example, and then we'll do a couple special cases. So for this example, Try and determine the equation for the linear relationship where the change in y is three times the change in x. 
and includes the point 0.57. So this is basically the slope. Since it's positive, that means if I were to graph it, it's going to be increasing into the right, rising to the right. And because it includes this point, this is going to be my y1, this is going to be my x1, I'm going to have y minus 7 is 3 times x minus 5. Okay? All right. Now, let's look at this. There's many ways to express this and talk about this. This is called the point-slope form. And the reason it's called that is because you can immediately look at that and say, there's the slope. But you can also look at this and say, ah, uh, it includes the point 0.57. Okay. Now there's all kinds of algebra and games we can play with this. So I can do this. Let me, I can multiply through by the 3 to get that. I can add the 7 to both sides to get that. Okay. Now this is another form. This is equally valid. Um, this tends to be more useful and it's uh, perfectly fine to use and describe a line like this. Sometimes uh, this can be useful in different situations. This is called the slope-intercept form. And what's nice about this is that when x equals 0, I know that I immediately look at this and say y equals minus 8. There's one more form that sometimes is used. I need a little extra room here. Is notice if I subtract 3 from both sides there, I get what's called the general form. Okay. Um, this is sometimes used because it's uh, uh, it's useful for some edge cases. In fact, we're going to look at two different uh, weird cases where if we think about it in terms of the general form, it makes life a little bit easier. Okay. In particular, <coughs> let's go back to the graphical view of these things. There's two situations I didn't examine. Okay. Suppose for a given change in x, there's no change in y. If that's the case, I'm going to have a horizontal line. No matter what change in x I have, there's going to be no change in y. And so if I go back to thinking about it in terms of that, then this m has to be 0. So no matter what change I have here, we're going to have no change there. So the formula for this line is basically y equals a constant. So for example, suppose that's uh, y equals 4. That's the equation of the horizontal line that goes through, whose value of y is always 4. Okay. Last case. So we've talked about a horizontal line, or about a vertical line. Suppose my equation now does that. Okay. Now it doesn't make sense to talk about that relationship. Because right? this is basically saying I can't have any change in x. So it doesn't make any sense to talk about. Right? And there's uh, every value of y is possible. So if we go back and think about this in the general form, the general form is normally written like this. We have something times x plus something times y equals c. In this case, this is all y's are possible. Okay. So we don't really need to talk about that. And there's only one possible value for x. And let me change that. And it's basically, it's whatever x I get there. Okay? So for example, if 
that's x equals 5 where that goes through, the formula for this vertical line is x equals 5. Okay, okay. thank you.